Hey everyone, Morgan here. So we are starting off our Properties of Solutions lecture, okay, for AP Chem, with the question, what is a solution? Now around the house, they're very easy to find. Iced tea, coffee, Kool-Aid, but not soda pop. Soda pop is not uniform. You see bubbles in it. With the iced tea, the coffee, and the Kool-Aid, they are all uniform and that's going to become very important in our terms today. Now, what is a solute? The solute is a substance dissolved in a liquid to form a solution. And last year, we had said that it's what you have less of when you make up a solution. So then the other part would be the solvent, which is the dissolving medium in a solution, or like last year we said, what you have more of. Almost always we're going to use water as our solvent. Just to show you that it isn't that 100% of the time, there's a lab that we're going to do in this chapter where water is the solute, and we use an alcohol as the solvent. So that means a solution is a homogeneous mixture of solute and solvent. And I think it's important to take note that this is something that's uniform, homogeneous or homogeneous. It's the same throughout. The bubbles in soda pop mean it's not homogeneous. Now we have a few terms here about solution concentration. Unsaturated, a solution that can still dissolve more solute, versus saturated, containing the amount of dissolved solute that would be in equilibrium with undissolved solute at a specific temperature. And supersaturated, more solute has dissolved than should. So if you're in the kitchen cooking, you got a pot of water on the stove, and you sprinkle a little bit of salt in it, sodium chloride. That's going to be unsaturated. But if you pour in so much salt that you have a pile of it at the bottom of the pot of water, and then a whole bunch of it dissolved in the water, that's what saturated is. And I put up some links for some videos about supersaturated that are really cool. Cool. It shows you a supersaturated solution of sodium acetate, okay, and how it's made. So I really recommend you check those out on the Schoology feed. Okay, now. The word miscible implies the mutual solubility of two solutions in the same phase. Typically what that would mean to us is that you can mix them. They can be mixed. They will dissolve in each other. Immiscible would be the opposite. They don't. Now, miscible is like alcohol and water. Immiscible would be like a vinegar and oil salad dressing. Colloids are a substance made up of suspended particles larger than most molecules, but too small to be seen in an optical microscope. A wonderful example of this is jello. Jello is basically translucent, okay? But if you shine a light through it, like you shine a laser pointer through it, the light gets scattered. That means that you have larger particles in there. And that scattering is generally called the Tyndall effect. The scattering of light passing through a cold. Okay, there you go for page one. 
Let's move on to page number two. Draw a picture of what a solution of sodium chloride is going to look like. Well, let's use some blue here and imply that we have, you know, water. It's a solution. Now we're going to have some particles that are chloride particles. Cl minus Cl minus Cl minus. But we're also going to have some that are sodium ions. So I'm going to draw them a little bit smaller. Na plus, Na plus, Na plus. So sodium chloride is ionic. That means it's going to dissociate when we put it in the water and it's going to break up into these individual particles. That's the polar effect of water on it. Okay? And they are randomly moving around. The number of sodiums must equal the number of chlorides. Okay? And they're not connected. Now, I don't think you're ever going to see a situation where all the sodium ions are this side and all the chlorides are on that side naturally. That's not going to happen. It's going to be very random. Okay. Now, what if it's a saturated solution of sodium chloride? Put the water level in like that. And again, we're going to have the chlorides that are just floating around randomly. We're going to have the sodiums. also floating around randomly, but down here in the bottom we're going to have a pile of solid sodium chloride. And that is absolutely necessary for it to be saturated. Now of course you could filter that out, okay, but to make sure that it's saturated you have to have that there because it is an equilibrium between the dissolved and undissolved. Now, if we're going to talk about an unsaturated solution, it's basically this picture, okay, without the salt on the bottom, but to make it a little more obvious in my drawing, when, you know, comparing to these two, I'm just going to put one each of the ions. I have fewer ions there than I would if it were saturated. Okay, so that's pretty much it for page number two. Let's move on now to page number three. Okay, and we want to talk about what does it look like if we have an immiscible mixture? Well, we did this with the density column, one of your very first lectures in honors, Kim. You have two layers, like a vinegar and oil salad dressing, a polar and a non-polar layer. And the one that's on top is always the one that's less dense. The one that's on the bottom is the one that's more dense. Okay? Now, what if we have calcium ion interacting with water. What's this going to look like? Well, I'm going to draw a calcium 2 plus ion. Circle it there. And now I'm going to bring in the water molecules. And what you're going to see is that the water molecules orient themselves in a very specific way. where the oxygens are pointing towards the calcium ion. Now, if this were a fluoride ion, you would see the opposite. My little Mickey Mouse head looking water molecules. The hydrogens this time would be the ones oriented towards the fluoride. See, in an oxygen molecule, there's the O, hydrogen, hydrogen, 
lone pairs up here. This is the somewhat negative side and the hydrogens are the somewhat positive sides of the molecule. So, there's a calcium fluoride or any ionic substance. Okay, usually we call this one sodium chloride. Now, if I have some water molecules that come in and suddenly start attracting to that ion, they can pull this ion off. And we are going to get a hydration sphere around that ion. We're going to get six water molecules that surround it. Now the same thing can happen with the positive ion, except a little difference this time. What you're going to see, oops, I'm spilling water. Somebody get me a paper towel. What you're going to see is that they orient differently. This time it's the oxygens that are surrounding the ion, whereas for this one, it was the hydrogens that were attracted to the negative ion. Okay. All right, so that's it for the first three pages of this outline. When you tune back in for the next one, we're going to talk about solution concentration.